You know, we debated pretty hardly around the office here and we finally landed on the six major components of today's standard AR-15 completed upper assembly. What each of those six major components are and what the heck they're for is coming up next. Hey guys, Randy here with AT3Tactical.com, here with episode one of our ultimate AR-15 beginner's guide, and this is where it all begins. Doesn't matter whether you're eyeballing this range-ready Springfield Saint here, or building your own from scratch like this guy right here, the first step to knowing you have the right tool for the right job is to get a firm grasp on the basics. All right, there's six major components. You have your barrel, your muzzle device, your gas system, your bolt carrier group, the handguards, and the upper receiver. Next week, we're dropping an entire episode on barrels alone, but what do you need to know about them today before we start the deep dive? The first thing you need to know is barrel profile. Most commonly, you'll find four standard profile types. From thickest to thinnest, you'll have bull barrels, H-bars, or heavy barrels, then the classic government profile, which I'll also include the SOCOM mod here, and pencil barrels. Beyond that, several of today's barrel manufacturers also have some proprietary barrel profiles. In many cases, they're designed to either improve weight distribution or reduce that heat impact on the barrel's accuracy. Second thing to know is barrel chambering. Uh, your chambering choice will dictate nearly every decision on builds, mods, and accessories that you make going forward. And although the bulk of today's Ultimate Beginner's Guide is focused on the 5.56.223 AR-15 barrel, we still have some honorable mentions here and there for AR-15 variants like 223 Wild, 300 Blackout, 6.5 Grindle, 9mm, 308, and of course your 6.5 Creedmoor. Barrel tidbit number three to focus on today, barrel length. This one gets a little tricky with the ever-changing regs, but most common length of the standard AR-15 barrel is going to be around that legal 16-inch length, where it's not an AR pistol, which is anything below 16 inches, or you don't have to fill out paperwork or fork over cash to register your shooter as an SBR, or short-barreled rifle. Longer than 16 inch barrels have their place also. Speaking from a right tool for the right job standpoint, most folks will choose longer barrels, mostly for accuracy and precision, more so than shooting, maneuvering around the range or protecting your home, where a shorter barrel is the more common choice. Next up in upper assembly major component list, muzzle devices. And man, are there a lot of options out there. However, really only three main types. You have your muzzle brakes, your muzzle compensators, and flash hiders. Muzzle brakes pump the brakes on that felt recoil by changing the direction and pattern of the gas exiting the muzzle. Uh, muzzle compensators reduce those natural forces that want to push the tip of your barrel around after shooting, basically compensating for that movement with unique gas dispersion patterns around the muzzle. And flash hiders, well, they hide flash. There's not much more else to say here about that other than the most widely popular flash hider by far has to be the standard military A2 birdcage. All right, the gas system's up next and there's four major components to this system. There's the gas port on the barrel, a properly aligned gas block, hint, hint, a highway for the gas to travel, AKA the gas tube, and the gas key on your BCG. Key things to remember as we explore the AR-15 gas system down the road, there's four gas tube lengths. There's pistol, carbine, mid-length, and rifle, and each one of them are gonna be dictated by your barrel manufacturers and where they drill the gas port. You've also got adjustable and fixed gas blocks, but the most important factor to getting the gas block right is that alignment, since 80% or more of your cycling failures will be closely tied to your gas system. Then you have your BCG or bolt carrier group, and this is where all the magic happens. There's quite a few moving pieces in your BCG to make that magic happen, but the most crucial are your gas key or carrier key, which accepts gas from the gas block, your bolt and cam pin themselves where all the magic happens for feeding, chambering, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, and cocking, your firing pin which sets everything into motion after pulling the trigger, and of course all of that is housed in the bolt carrier which moves as a single unit during functioning. 
On to major component number five of your AR-15 upper. We're talking hand guards, and let's be honest, from a functionality standpoint, there's really only two things that matter here. It's either mounting your crap or keeping your fingers from burning. And there is some good history bits behind how we came from this to the modern hand guards of today like this. But deciding which way to go between free float or drop in, quad rail versus M lock, or the accessories that match your shooting style, you'll probably find yourself making your own personal decisions based on weight or how awesome this thing looks more than anything else. Major component number six is your upper receiver, and here's what it does. Not only does it receive things like your barrel or your lower receiver and whatnot, but it also gets one of the most important jobs in your entire AR-15, which is containing those little tiny mini explosions happening inches from your face, so yeah, it's kind of important. They vary by aesthetics and looks depending on the manufacturer, but what you'll either find is a forward assist option or a slick side with no forward assist. So I have to say this again, whether you're buying your range ready to go AR-15 or you're buying it one piece at a time to build, the most mission critical choice to start with is your barrel. It really sets the bar for what type of tool you're trying to use for the shooting job that you're asking your AR-15 to do. If you want proof, go check out our website, AT3, or any of the major AR-15 parts sites, and just see how large the barrel section is. If you're immediately lost in the sea of choices like I was, then you'd better have a look at this next video right over here, because it is the most in-depth and thorough episode of the entire Ultimate AR-15 Beginner's Guide, and it's coming up next.